Detroit. Welcome to the Reverend Dr. Jim Holly. Hello, Detroit television and radio show. My name is Tyrone Winfrey, and I am excited to be here this morning as we stand on the shoulders, following the footsteps, or whatever you want to say, uh, with Reverend Dr. Jim Holly. Uh, Dr. Jim Holly's out this morning, but uh, I'm here as I was a few months ago, and it's just a great time here in the city of Detroit. We are 10 days away from the midterm election. 10 days. 10 days away from the midterm election. And all of you in Detroit, I don't know if you got your election, your election connection. It talks about all the ballots, all those that are running for office. And we're excited just to put out by the none other illustrious dynamic, Janice Winfrey, our city clerk. And she is also the chairperson of the Detroit Elections Commission. And she happens to be my wife as well, so I'm excited for her. But this election connection has all kind of get great information, a sample ballot. It has all types of things in here so far as where you can vote, uh, who's running, and so forth. And one of the main things I want to give out, a, a big shout out to Wayne County Community College District. Uh, Wayne County Community College District, as you know, has a millage uh, that, we're, that is on the ballot. And also, WC3D, when you look at what Dr. Curtis L. Ivory is doing over there at Wayne County Community College District, they also have satellite voting sites at the Northwest Campus. You can vote from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. At the Wayne County Community College Eastern Campus, you can also vote from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. So what I'm saying, Detroiters, and those that are looking to vote, you don't have to wait till Election Day on November the 6th. You can vote at these sites, Northwest Campus and Eastern Campus. And also, uh, thank Janice Winfrey, you can vote at the Rosa Parks Transit Center. You, you waiting to catch the bus, you just got off the bus or whatever, you can vote there from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. as well uh, on a daily basis. And then also, of course, you can vote at the Detroit Elections Office, uh, which is on West Grand Boulevard, at 2978 West Grand Boulevard, you can vote from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, they, come on, there's no excuse. You can vote all of these different places, 9 to 4, on a daily basis, and you can also vote, of course, at uh, your polling site on November the 6th. A lot of things on the ballot. Our former president, some people still say he's our president, uh, Barack Obama was in town yesterday at Cass Technical High School, and uh, if anybody was there, call in, let us know. What did you think about the rally? I was uh, at a rally on Thursday at Wayne County Community College District. Uh, former Attorney General Eric Holder, as well as uh, running candidate for governor, Gretchen Whitmer, were there to have a town hall meeting. Uh, was well attended. A lot of great information about the proposals and about, you know, what's going on within our city, our state, and our nation. And that was held this past Thursday at Wayne County Community College Northwest Campus. So... The key thing is there's a lot going on out there, and we want you definitely to vote on November the 6th. So call in. Tell us what you think about the, the judicial races, the 36th district uh, court judge people are running. We also have those that are running for Third Circuit Court. We have those that are running for governor, uh, for senator. You know, uh, the, the Detroit Elections uh, uh, commission, I mean, not the commission, but the uh, Charter Commission, I'm sorry, Detroit Charter Commission, people are running for that, uh, for Detroit Board of Education, where I served for a number of years and uh, had the distinction to be president of the board. I'm so excited about those that are running for the school board as well. So it's a lot, it's a great time uh, here in Detroit, Highland Park, great time in the nation. I'm still, you know, no matter what some people say, I'm just glad to be an American and be part of, you know, this great land and things that are going on. And when you think about things that are going on, I, I, I got to announce some, some key things that are going on in our city as well. Next Thursday and Friday, you all, next Friday, next Thursday and Friday, November 1st and 2nd, all roads lead to Greater Grace Temple. Greater Grace Temple will host the largest college fair and career expo in Detroit. It is a two-and-a-half-day event. It's Thursday during the day. It's Thursday evening, and it's Friday as well. On Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we'll have colleges, historically black colleges, 
state of Michigan schools. There will also be skilled trades there, uh, workshops on financial aid, on college readiness. I'm telling you all, we got to help prepare our, our students for the next, the next level. Uh, uh, Pastor Reginald Lane, who passed away years ago, uh, once said on a radio show, the person you are today is based on what you decided to do yesterday. So when you think about our young people, the decisions they're making right now is going to impact their tomorrow. So we want them to come out 9 o'clock to 1 p.m. next Thursday, and then on Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, our pastor is uh, Bishop Charles H. Ellis III. It's put on by the Guidance and Education Ministry. It is at 23500 West 7 Mile. We want your students to come out on both days. But then on Thursday night at 5.30, 5.30 you all, everybody say 5.30, we're going to have our family night. This night is basically about colleges, it's about skilled trades, and about jobs. We'll have employers there. We'll have people there to help you get a job. That's from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. I told you all last time when I was on this show, I was at a meeting, and they told me the bridge that will go from Detroit to Windsor, the new bridge, the Gordy Howe International Bridge, is a $3 billion project. I was told that, you remember old Hudson, we should shop at Hudson's. Well, that's gone. A new skyscraper is being built. That's a $1 billion project. The Monroe Block is a $1 billion. I said billion dollar project. So I was told also we don't get people locally, Detroiters, Highland Park folks, to come and get these positions. They're going to go out of state and hire individuals. So please come out, find out what's going on so far as jobs, skilled trades, again, that's called the Greater Grace Temple College Fair and Career Expo. It is entitled, it's more than just a college fair. So it's more than just a college fair. It is not just colleges, it's skilled trades, it's jobs, all kind of things. Again, Thursday, November 1st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursday, November 1st from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. So if you can't come during the day, come in the evening to the family night. And then again on Friday, November the 2nd, 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m., you can come out. We thank uh, the guidance and education ministry over there at Greater Grace Temple, uh, 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 Sister Lucille White and Sister Marva Powell making it happen with a team of people that are putting this event on. So please come out. If you don't have a child, come out for your neighbor, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, somebody. If, if the student needs a job, they need to come. If mom and dad needs a job, I mean, if a student needs to go to college, they need to come. Mom and dad needs a job, they need to come. If, if, if cousin Ray Ray or, 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 or your neighbors or the fellas in the hood need to get a skilled trade, they need to come. So we want them to come out again Thursday, November 1st, 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursday, November 1st from 5.30 to 9 p.m. And Friday, November 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then also, there's so much going on for our young people. There's a group called Men Who Dare. Men Who Dare Incorporated. Larry Johnson is president, CEO of this organization. They're having their 59th annual scholarship black and white ball. That's on Saturday, November the 10th. That is from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's going to be at Motor City. This is to help raise money for students in getting scholarships to college, to universities. I cannot say enough about Men Who Dare, what they're doing, helping young people for, I, I think, about 50 years now. Uh, to um, Excuse me, 59 ball, so 59 years uh, so far as helping students get scholarships and go on to uh, higher education. So these, these type of things, we, we just have to salute uh, Detroit Highland Park because there's so much great things going on for our young people. And, and, and there's, a, there's a young man uh, named Wesley Ganson over, uh, he has a program called Center for Student Advocacy. He's over at McKenzie School doing a phenomenal work, helping to mentor these young people so far as they can make the right decisions so far as the rest of their lives. That's critical. So a lot is going on. We want you to come out. Make sure you vote. Well, well let's do it in this order. Make sure you come to the College Fair Career Expo on November 1st and 2nd. Then we want you to vote on November the 6th. That's a Tuesday. Then we want you to come to the Men Who Dare 59th Annual Scholarship Black and White Ball on Saturday, November 10th. So we want you to come out and, and basically salute these different things that are going on. So let's talk about some of these things that are going on. If you want to call in, uh, our number is 
313-868-0342. Or you can call 313-868-0351. Or you can call 313-868-4336. We got all kind of numbers you can call. But first of all, call 313-868-0342. Call in. Let's talk about the election. Let's talk about the College Fair, the Skill Expo. Let's talk about the black and white ball. Whatever's on your mind, uh, let's talk about it. To 9 o'clock today, we, we are we're excited. Also, um, uh, today we're doing a tour. As you know, we have a tour company called Les Tours des Trois, which means in the French, the tour of Detroit. That tour is taking place at starting at 10 o'clock this morning. It's going to emanate from Ann Arbor. Uh, the buses roll from Ann Arbor with, 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 with individuals. Then they come to Detroit, uh, Greater Grace Temple, uh, uh, right on uh, the Shai Wasi parking lot. We're going to pick up individuals. Then from there, we're going to tour the west side of Detroit. We're going to have lunch at 12.30 p.m. at the U of M Detroit Center, uh, which is on Woodward Avenue right there at Martin Luther King. And then after that, we're going to tour the east side of Detroit. This is all free of charge, y'all. This is all free of charge. You can meet at Greater Grace Temple today at 9.30 this morning and go on a tour of the city of Detroit free of charge. We're talking about our city. I'm so excited about Detroit. I, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I, y'all just have to excuse me because I love my city. I know a lot is going on, people coming in, making it happen and so forth. But we've been here through some tight times, some desolate times, and we stayed and we're here. And uh, I just want, we got to keep making it happen. So we got to make it happen for our young people. We got to make it happen so far as the election. We got to make it happen so far as men who dare. All types of things going on. We got a caller that's calling in to talk about Detroit, Highland Park, HP. Caller, you on the air with Tyrone Winfrey. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I've seen Obama down at Cass. And the Democrats coming in Detroit trying to get the people to vote. Uh huh. But but what 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 was amazing? He had no shame in his game to come to Detroit, and what he done to Detroit is a, was a crime. It's a crime. Yes, because when I looked at the home ownership when he went into office. In Detroit, uh-huh. we lost homes in great numbers. Okay. When I looked and seen the jobs when he was in office, we lost. So we are not even in the workforce anymore. Mm. And when I look and seen him give a waiver to the mayor to take $70 million annually from Detroit and give it to Wyandotte uh-huh. from the human uh, 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 service that we was getting to, to fix our homes and stuff, our tax money coming back in block grants. Well, he had no shame to come here and ask people that okay. he put out in, into young people in the the millennium, the black millennium, are living in homes with no lights and gas. Their children so, 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 don't so, stay so, in one school three months. Okay, so 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 what's your so name? When, what's when your I name? Call that a gally affair down there at Cass. Okay, but I'm saying, can you get what's your point? What are you trying to say? What are you you well, you're against I, President well, Obama? You against what happened to Cass? A, a great thing happening for the people who, as, as you did. I didn't see that it's so great. No, no. Well, you know I what? Look, what, what I said is, I, it's a great thing that happened. I wasn't at Cass Tech. That's my. I'm. A, that's my. I graduated from Cass, and I'm glad to see him hosting that uh, event of that caliber. I wasn't there. I said my thing. Call in. Let us know what. What's, what, what? What did you think about it? You're doing that. Oh, I, I think it was. A, I think those who went down there. Uh, it reminded me when I seen last week the Taliban over in F, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, 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 he told the people, they told the people, do not vote. Because they said, the government you're voting for are puppets of the United States. And when you vote, uh, that you give validity to a puppet government. 
Okay. That's not our government. Okay. When I, I, I look I, at I, the chart. I got you. I got you. I, 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 we're going to agree to disagree. I, I don't think it's a puppet government. But, but, but do you, let me ask you this question, then, then you answer me on our, our when we had all our tax money to, to pay for the water and for the company and all these things, the city council collaborated with the state and, 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 and voted and didn't give us a vote on our own property, and now we don't own any assets okay. in Detroit. So do you think that government is a cooperative government or it's a representative of the people? Well, I, you know what? Let's do this. Let's see what our other callers think about your comments. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, because you, your point, you know, every opinion, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to weigh and say every pen, opinion is valid, but let, let's see what a, a, well, tell another. Tell me what you disagree with me is, is <laughs> are the, the city council represented or are they just officials? Hey, oh, no, I believe they're representative. I, I believe the thing well, is. Tell me, let, let me, tell me how when they stripped us of all our assets and we didn't have a vote on nothing. You know what? The thing is, let me say this, and I, I guess callers are calling in. The key thing is that I, I, I've been an elected official, and a lot of times I've found that we criticize, we marginalize, we put down, we talk about elected officials, and sometimes you just don't know what all they do. Sometimes people say they ain't doing nothing. They don't realize the number of bills and ordinances that comes before that city council. You don't realize the things they do in the community. Uh, I watch my wife, how hard she works, and so forth. And sometimes we don't realize all they do. Yeah, sometimes you may say, okay, they, they, this didn't get represented, whatever, whatever. But let's continue to still vote for our, our people and, and just hold them accountable. That's the key okay, thing. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say. Okay. The last thing is that the election, when we, we vote, we don't get results even a month later. No, I, I, I ain't not talking about your wife or person. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the the organization down there is have cheated the people of Detroit right. out of the right to vote. So all when, all you right. don't, all right. when you don't give the the the, the, uh, the uh, what the results was. All right, I, I got you. Again, I can't agree. I, I can't now. agree with that point. But the key thing is, go down to that office. See what they're doing at the elections office. Oh, we see what they're doing. They, they, they ain't give us no account of the vote a, a month later. They are uh, manipulating the vote down there. Nah, okay, I, okay, I'm we, gonna we're going to disagree. Hey, 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 you know what? We're going to disagree with that, but I want you to let another caller call in and, okay, and let's see what their opinion up. is. You have a great day and a great weekend. You're on the air with Tyrone Winfrey on the Reverend Jim Holly Hello Detroit show. Yeah, good morning, Tyrone. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. Um, this is Tom Wilson, and that good to see you yesterday, too, over the um, for Eric Holder. Man, it's, it's, all, it's always great seeing you, brother, because you, you make it happen. It, but anyway, to um, which I, <laughs> I'm i going to use a sledgehammer to kill a fly. Mm -hmm. When President Obama came into office, uh -huh. General Motors and Chrysler were, <laughs> they were, they were in the ICU, you yes. know, uh, they were dying. Yes. Okay? Yes. And yes. When he came in, and he said, this, this is a direct quote, he said, though it may not be the popular thing to do, it's the right thing to do in terms of continuing those auto bailout loans. Yes, yes. And, you know, these, I hear folks talking about, he didn't do nothing for black folks. But I tell you <laughs> what, had he not continued those auto loans, how many black folk would have lost, first of all, their job, their income, their homes, probably even broke up with their spouse, Right. couldn't pay their children's tuition. So, I mean, there's a ripple effect there in terms of what he did do, okay? I mean, the man saved, as far as I'm concerned, he saved this country from falling off the edge into a tsunami of an economic depression. Absolutely. Not seen since the light of the Depression of 29. Right. And then, I mean, you know, when he got in and things got, you know, Chrysler and GM started to do better. They started to hire more people. They started to gain market share. They were building, you know, new plants or, or, or modernizing the ones they had. And, I mean, look at where they are now. Yeah, right. All right? Yeah. I don't necessarily think that they are right at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. but there's some big, bright light right. from where they came. Right. Because, I mean, with, 
um, what the song say, slipping in the darkness. Right. right. They had slipped into darkness. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, had they, had he not did what he did, shouting time, and this country, boy, Lord, thank God, for President Obama. Right. Well, Tom. And, you know, and also in regards to uh, the debate, I'm not to the debate, uh, but uh, to this after, this morning's meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say this morning, I'm talking about the D1 meeting. Councilman Tate has a mm-hmm. monthly meeting right. every month at the end of the month. Right. Um, from what I read on his website, he said that there's uh, Gretchen Whitman's going to be there. Bill okay. Schutte's going to be there, and Debbie Stabenow's going to be there. Wow. It's going to be, the meeting's going to start at 10 o'clock. Wow. It's going to be at 19125 Greenview, right there at Southern Mile, at um, Calvary Presbyterian Church. Wow. Wow. Thanks so, for that. You know, that so, folks, you know, uh, if you want to come in there and face the man, and I'm talking about the people in the audience, right. some of them who have Obamacare that Bill Schutte wants to yank away from them Mm -hmm. you can come there you can look him in the eye and tell him no all right okay so uh i think we thank you for that announcement wow i didn't know that this morning okay yeah so i guess it's 19125 greenview at seven mile calvary presbyterian church all right and uh but um you know what whitmer's going to win that's me saying this okay mm -hmm. Uh and you know them trying to tie her to grand home I mean, look at when Grand Home was in office. And I ain't making no excuses for her, okay? okay? Because basically the whole country was sick. Mm-hmm. You know, when President Obama got elected and what, how many jobs are being lost under the Bush administration, and I heard Bill Maher say this. He said it took a black man to come in and clean up the mess that a white man left, mm. okay? So, but anyway, I'm not going to. I'm starting to repeat myself, and no, I'm not no, going to no, hold up no. the line any longer. But, but Tom, we thank yep. you for calling in, and can you repeat uh, the name of the church as well okay. as the address one more time and All the right. time? The name of the church is Calvary Presbyterian, C-A-L-V-A-R-Y, and Presbyterian. I'll let folks try and figure that out. But it's right <laughs> there at the corner of Greenview and West Seven Mile, about, oh, what, about four, maybe five blocks west of the Southfield Freeway. If you come off going north and you make that left-hand turn off of the Southfield on the 7 Mile, it will be on your right-hand side. Okay. If you're coming down 7 Mile at Greenview, it will be on your left-hand side. So, I mean, folks, let's go ahead and let's pack it in okay. and let's, let's tell Shooty, no, it's not your turn. Okay, well, Tom, thank you for letting us know about that. We got another caller, so you okay. have a great day, and I know you're going to be there yep. making it happen. And thanks for the, taking the call. Okay, thank you. All right, okay, bye. All right. So, so as you heard, it's going to be a debate at uh, Calvary Presbyterian Church right there on Greenview, near West Seven Mile. Uh, candidates uh, Gretchen Whitmer as well as Mr. William Bill Schutte uh, are planning to be there, and I believe uh, Senator Stabenow will be there as well. So Detroiters, Highland Parkers, go out this morning, 10 o'clock a.m., Calvary Presbyterian Church, Greenview and Seven Mile. Um, at, at whether you like what's going on in our nation, not like it, or whatever, the thing is we have a right, a democratic right, a democratic, you know, you think about other nations, and, and we got a dem- democracy here. We can listen to debates. We can have opinions, not have certain opinions or whatever. And then we can go out and vote what our opinions are and, and, and then see the results of those votes. Um, so I like this society. You know, I know we got some challenges, but, hey, I love it. And we're going to make it happen. Again, vote on November the 6th. Go to the college fair on November 1st and 2nd. Go to Men Who Dare, uh, Black and White Ball on the 10th. All these great things are happening for our people. Let's take the next caller. You're on the air with Tyrone Winfrey on the Hello Detroit show. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you know, a lot of people feel that the Democrat or the Republican candidate, either one of them ain't going to do nothing for the people in Detroit. Only thing I can see on the ballot is worth words, but both of them is Wayne County Community College. And maybe <laughs> and maybe I'll go through there and pick out, pick out a few judges, but... For the last 40 years, uh, Grandorm hadn't did nothing. She hadn't spoke about, she speak up about the insurance situation now, but she didn't do it then. And, right. and, this, and, the, and, and the Republican uh, uh, candidate, he's not going to do that. He, didn't, he, he had a chance to, 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 to get in the governor's case 
about the water situation you need to do. So damn if you do and damn if you don't. Because we've been voting in this country for at least I have since 1972. And I worked every day and took care of myself. A damn politician never did nothing for me. Now other people can do what they want. I don't want to be. I see why the Jehovah Witness people don't vote, even though they reap certain benefits because it's all corrupt. All right, so you say okay, so you saying they're all corrupt, you're not going to vote. Uh, you know, yeah, again, they're all corrupt, because look at the city council. People, people have been voting for the city council for years, mm-hmm. and then black, I, I, I watch it on cable TV, black folks still have to go down there and beg them Negroes to do their job. So, so uh, I'll say two things. Sometimes, again, I, you know, we, 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 we look at politi- uh, elected officials, and we say they're not doing their jobs, but you don't realize all the things that they do. Then on the other hand, uh, or another opinion, I, I, I'm just let me throw it out there. If we didn't vote and we didn't have elected officials, what, what would we have in this nation? You know, if we well, didn't vote, so. we say everybody corrupt, century, we ain't going to do nothing. Back in the 1960s, when black folks was, was given the right to vote on the South, how they was killed, the Jewish boys was killed, trying to, Registered people to vote and stuff like that. You had a different type of politicians back then. Those people back in those <laughs> days, uh, when you put a person in office, they really fought and tried to look out for people. Soon the white man started offering these Negroes, especially in the North, a dollar. That's when they started okay. selling their people out. Sure ain't nothing wrong to, uh, uh, to vote. I had ran for office on my job and was elected to vote. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But see, the thing about it now, the reason why it's so corrupted now, same thing with the city council member we got on there, kicking kickbacks on the okay. side. Let, let, and and when, when Kwame was doing that and, and Burt Johnson was doing that, the press stayed on their case for doing that. How come they ain't saying nothing about Leland for sitting at the table now and he, and the white man even told what he was doing? Okay, well, let, 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 let's, we got some other callers, but, you know, the thing is, we, we want to put it on the white man. But, uh, you know, when you read history, and I love history, even going to biblical history, there has been sin, there has been corruption. Not to say we disagree with it. We're just saying that sometimes, um, you know, these, you know, um, sometimes things, I, I don't know what to say, but the thing is, I, well, I'm gonna say we still have to have the elected. The Bible to, even tell you we, that the flesh <laughs> would fail you, but the spirit is strong. There you go. Do All right. not so, have so, so, confidence so, so, so. in man. Have confidence in God. Thank okay. You. Well, thank you. Thank you for calling in. So, so no matter what your opinions are, no matter what they are, so far as voting, we live in a democratic society. You know, we need to look and research what's going sometime in other nations where people are living under autocratic societies or living in autocratic societies and all kind of things are going on where you can't vote, you can't express your opinion, you got one way of doing things, and that's it. So no matter the corruption, no matter what's going on, I still say look at your election connection put out by Janice Winfrey, Janice Marie Winfrey, the city clerk, the chairperson of the Detroit Elections Commission, and it talks about all these great things so far as not voting straight party. That's not her decision, y'all. That was made about the state of Michigan. Also, it has a sample ballot in here. It has the candidates are running. It has all quite great information about where to vote, even on the back. It tells you which districts you in, which precincts you vote in. What's your polling place? Because a lot of times people say, I don't know where to vote. It's right here on this document. It was mailed to your house. If you didn't get it, contact the elections office, and they will get you one. Or you can go down there and pick it up. Also, you can do satellite absentee voting at Wayne County Community College, Northwest Campus, 8200 West Outer Drive, 8200 West Outer Drive, Wayne County Community College, Eastern Campus, 5901 Connor. You can also vote at the Rosa Parks Transit Center. While you're waiting to catch the bus, you got off the bus, you're, not, you're just downtown, you want to vote, it's at 1310 Cass Avenue. That's downtown. 
from 9 to 4 each day. You can vote at one of these places. Feel free. Also, you can go down to the elections office, the Detroit Department of Elections, at 2978 West Grand Boulevard. You can vote from 9 to 4 there as well, any day. You can vote next week, all right? And then you can also vote on Election Day. So hopefully you vote no matter what you think of the society. It's a great society to be part of. Y'all call in and let me know. If I, maybe, I, maybe I didn't get the memo. Maybe I'm living in the wrong society or something because, you know, yes, we got some situation. We're going we to have challenges. You got challenges in your family. You got challenges with your cousin. You got challenges with your friend. You got challenges in your neighborhood. It's going to be challenges, y'all, you know. But the thing is, we, we, we got to rise above that. So vote on November the 6th or vote early at one of those sites. Also, on November the 1st and 2nd, come to Greater Grace Temple. For those that vote or not going to vote or whatever, you still deserve to make sure our students have a future, their success. Bishop Charles H. Ellis III talks about future and destiny. Do you realize if a child is 17 years old, in 10 years, they'll be 27? In 10 years. 10 years ago, they were 7 years old in 2008. In 2017, they two, they, 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 uh, 2000, excuse me, 2018, they're 17 years old. In 2028, they're going to be 27. What they're going to be doing? They're going to be living in your basement. They're going to be living in your attic. What are you going to do to help your child? Help them, help your neighbor come to the largest college fair and career expo in Detroit. There will be colleges there, historically black colleges, HBCUs. It'll, in fact, this, this college fair used to be the black college fair. That was all held at Cobo. It was called the black college fair. It was called the Maxwell uh, House Black College Fair. It was called the Kraft Foods Black College Fair. It was called the College Fair for, uh, for, uh, for black colleges. It moved to Grady Grace in part in 2006, the evening portion, because nobody, hardly anybody was coming to Cobo in the evening. They stopped having the evening portion. Our pastor, Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, took up the mantle and basically allowed the college fair to come in the evening in 2006. By 2010, they said, we're going to move the whole fair there. Now Grady Grace Temple... 23500 West 7 Mile has taken over this event. It's called, it's more than just a college fair. It is from November the 1st on Thursday from 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m. Then on, and then you say, well, I'm working during the day and all that. Well, students are going to be bused there anyway, but you can come in the evening. 5.30 to 9 on Thursday, November the 1st, and then November the 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come on, y'all. Bring these students out. You may say, well, you know, what about they, they're a senior? Yes, they should come out. Well, they're a junior, they should come out. Yes, they're in middle school. Yes, they should come out. They're in elementary school. Yes, they should come out. I don't believe it's ever too early to start with a child, okay? Go to, look at Temple Israel and West Bloomfield, all right? Students start going to school at 18 months, y'all. 18 months they in school. And we started at 7 and 8 and all this kind of stuff. 18 months stay in school. The, ed, the economic disparity in this nation is directly correlated with the educational disparity. It, it, it just, to me, that's the educational, the economic disparity is equivalent or correlates with the educational disparity. We are starting too late with our young people. We, are, we, 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 we don't take, take them to school. We, we, what are they going to do in 10 years? What are they going to do in 20 years? Come on, y'all. Come out to that. Then also, you got a mentoring group called Men Who Dare who got a 59th annual scholarship ball on November the 10th at uh, uh, Motor City. They making it happen, y'all. They are making it happen. And I'm just so excited about all these great things that are going on in and around Detroit, Michigan. Call in 313-868-0342, 313-868-4336, or 313-868-0351. I am saying call in. Let's talk about what's going on in 
Detroit, and Highland Park. Let's talk about the voting. We've had some, some, some various opinions this morning on voting, and uh, it's interesting, again, I, you know, again, I, maybe I'm, you know, y'all call in and just, you know, let me know if I'm, 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 I'm not living in the right nation or whatever. I, I, I just, I like our democracy. Yes, we have ch challenges. Yes, we have things that are going on. But I like the idea of, you know, being able to vote, being able to debate, being able to research issues. You know, people ask me who you're voting for. I don't even know yet. I, 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 don't, I, I don't just come out and say, oh, I'm going to vote for this person. I got to look at all. The, I got to look at the research. I'm looking at the newspapers. I'm looking at uh, information on websites. You know, I'm trying to find out what did this candidate stand for? What is their background? Because, yeah, sometimes when people get in office, things change. I know that. I was on the Joy School Board. I saw how sometimes you, you say all this stuff you're going to do before you get in office. When you get in office, you're like, wait a minute. There are policies in place. There are bylaws in place. There are all kind of things in place. Sometimes you, you're not able to do it. But we still can't say they're not doing anything. Spend the time with the city clerk. Spend time with the city council. Spend time with the mayor, the governor. There are all kind of things that they're doing, they're voting on, and they're, they're working on that sometimes we don't even know about. So, so I'm excited. I got some callers calling in because they're excited too. Let's go to line one. I'll call you on the air with Tyrone Winfrey. It is the Hello Detroit show, and good morning, Detroit Highland Park. Hello? Hello? Yes, please go ahead, caller. Hi. Hi, uh, Tyrone Winfrey. This is uh, Dwayne Johnson. Is How this, are you? Wait a minute. Is this attorney Dwayne Johnson? Is this the, the gentleman is. that's been an attorney it, for 30 years that now is running for Wayne? Absolutely. Well, excuse me, Detroit? 36th District City Court? I mean, the court, is that you? That's me. That's Could you, me. Can, Absolutely. Oh, call, tell, tell us what's going on with you, uh, Mr. Jo Dwayne Johnson. Well, at this time, I am running for judge of the 36th District Court, and I'm trying to just get out and communicate with people in the city and let them know uh, what I plan to do as a judge being fair, being just, giving people an opportunity to be heard in the courtroom, uh, being timely and prompt okay. at the courtroom, and also being respectful to the mm. people that come before me, not only the litigants, but also the attorneys, uh, being respectful and giving them the courtesy that they deserve in the courtroom, okay. and treating people in the courtroom as I would want to be treated. Wow. 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 Well, you... And I also plan to use the position of a judge in the community to make a difference in the community, talking to our young people at schools, at community centers, and trying to give them information about the law, hmm. which will keep them out of the criminal justice system. Okay. So, so, so when you say, when you say, I mean, you, you, you're saying, not only be a judge in the courtroom, but go out and help educate people on the law so they won't commit the crime or they know the consequences of the crime? Is that what you're saying, Attorney Johnson? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. A lot of wow. times people get involved in situations out of ignorance. Right. And, and I think going to the community centers, going to the schools, educating them about the law and different things that will get them in trouble or get them – uh, to be violating the law, and maybe they're not even aware of it. You know, and wow. let's educate wow. our young people about that. Show them the consequences. And then if they do get into some kind of trouble, let them know about programs such as the Homes Youthful Training Act, where they can be on probation wow. and not have a criminal record if they complete their probation properly. Wow. Well, and, what? and so many people who get that opportunity end up violating it and end up with a criminal record anyway. And, and so it has to be stressed to them how important it is to keep your record clean wow. if you do happen to make a mistake or do something that, where you break the law and you're charged with, with, a, with a crime. Wow, wow. So, so we got callers calling in, but, 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 but let me ask you this, because I'm, I'm excited about what you said about help. You know, I'm, 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 you know they, call, they call me education man and all this kind of stuff in Detroit and Oh, and somebody you do a called great me. Job. They called me I, Professor I love of Detroit. Your passion I, 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 and, and I, passion I, for the young people <laughs> of this city. Well, I just love education. And so, we, see, the thing is, 
you know, when I even look at my own family sometimes and, and people have gone to court, sometimes you just don't know, you know, what the consequence is. So, you, you know, you're like, I'm going to do this thing or, or I'm not going to do it or I make a mistake and do it. But you're saying you want to take that, educate the folk. I, you know, if you can get into the high schools and the middle schools and the colleges, universities and just have a, 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 a series of programs or have something going on that people could understand the law. That would be so critical. And in speaking of that, Attorney Johnson, what exactly is the 36th District Court? What do they handle? You know, I, they got a circuit court, third circuit court. They got 36th District Court. Then they got courts in city county building. What, I, you, we get confused as, 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 as citizens. What does 36th District handle? Call, it, call us, hold on. We're going to well, hear 36th this. District, okay, 36th District Court is like your first level trial court. Okay. In terms of, they handle criminal cases, which are misdemeanors. Okay. And they also handle a probable cause mm. hearings mm. on felonies. So if, if you're charged with a felony, the preliminary exam, if, it, if it's out of Detroit, will mm -hmm. be handled at 36th District Court. So, so they handle criminal cases. They also handle civil cases where the amount in, in controversy is twenty five less than twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. They also handle landlord tenant cases. Okay. Okay. And also traffic matters. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So so all of those are some of the things that are handled in the thirty sixth district court. So so when you say traffic matters, you're talking about like parking tickets, you're talking about uh, tr uh, moving violations, things like that. That's that's what yeah, they handle. Mo moving violations, uh, even Sometimes people consider, uh, you know, driving with a suspended license. Wow. wow. Even though that is also a, that's considered a misdemeanor as well. Okay. Uh, drinking and driving, sometimes oh. that's categorized under, under uh, traffic, but it's also a, a misdemeanor as well. Okay. Okay. So, so um, man, uh, that, 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 this is powerful. This is, you know what? I, I want to take this other call because they, they, they may have a question related to some of the things you're talking about. Just hold on because also I want to get your opinion um, about some of the things that were talked about earlier about not voting and, you know, everybody's corrupt or some people corrupt, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, because so I, 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 okay. you're a judge. You, you basically are held to the highest standard. You know, you sit – well, I'm not a judge yet. Now, I'm okay. Running, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm speaking. It. But, but let me say this: when I read about judges, I was reading about Solomon in the Bible the other night, and it was talking about how he judged the people. He had so much wisdom, you know, when they brought the baby before him right. and so forth. And and one person was saying, "My baby," the other, and they say, "We'll split the baby in half." And the person, you know, you know the story. So, so when I think about a right. judge, you have to sit and make a decision that is going to impact the rest of somebody's life. So, so whether Absolutely. you're 36 district or whatever, this is critical, y'all. Y'all can talk about not voting, but you talking right. about a judge. Don't vote, and then you say, well, what, "What if we don't have judges?" You know what I'm saying? But Mr. And Johnson, that, and that's that's oh. why that's why you need the wisdom of God. Oh boy, okay. When uh, you make mm. these decisions, absolutely. Ho ho hold on, um, hold on for. Uh, uh, we got another caller. I'm gonna take this call, and then we're gonna see if we can okay. talk some more. Ho hold on. Carla, you on the air with uh, Tyrone Winfrey. Hello, Detroit. Uh, good morning, and hello, Detroit. Hello, Detroit. How you doing this morning? I'm who, who, doing good. Who we have now, the pleasure of talking vote with? To the day I die, no matter how inept the city, uh, Detroit, uh, city of Detroit election department appears to be. Now, just as you were on the air just a minute ago, telling everybody how they can vote early, which I already knew. Mm -hmm. Why isn't this more widespread? Why don't we have commercials on TV so that it can reach the masses to inform them that they can vote early? We already know we need to vote. But instead of being on TV talking about uh, vote straight, this, that, and the third, tell the people that they can vote early so a lot of people will vote uh, more, you, will, you know, get out the vote. Okay. Second of all, when, I think it was 2012, when 60,000 ballots could not be recounted. This is why people don't vote, because they don't feel that the election department is, is uh, uh, capable. This is, that doesn't make any sense. Now, I know that's your wife. I'm not trying to bash your <laughs> wife. This is nothing personal. But I'm talking about the system here in Detroit that instead of encouraging people to vote, it discourages people to vote. 
Now, I think there should be commercials widespread early on, telling people to get out to these uh, satellite places and they can vote early to make it convenient for them. I think that should be done. I think voter education should be done all of the time instead of just waiting to the get time to election. They need to go into the schools and tell these students how important voting is, familiarize them with the ballot, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of work to do to be done, and you're right. And <laughs> your wife, Jazz Riffey, needs to step up her game. Goodbye. All right, all right. And, and Carla, I, I just want to let you know, they are going in, they are commercials, they are going into the schools, and I know that there was a discrepancy regarding those ballots, and uh, the law uh, didn't, because the law was written, they couldn't recount them. They did count them, so the votes were counted. But uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate your opinion because your opinion is definitely valid. And, uh, we, you know, we're we going to hold everybody accountable. All right. Uh, next uh, caller is on uh, line one. You're on, on the air with Tyrone Winfrey on the Hello Detroit show. I got people texting me, y'all. That's why I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to navigate this boat. But go ahead, caller. Hello. How you doing? Yes, sir. Um, I, I think that's a cop-out. Because I feel like this, everybody should get out there and vote. If they know what's really going on through our, our political system, they'll understand what's going on as far as voting. Okay. See, when you vote, see, when Barack Obama was in office, see, you got to vote for the House of Congress, the House of Senate, the House of Representatives. That's how you get your bills passed, not because of the president, because he's the president. Man, if he'd have passed that, if he'd got all Democrat in that house, man, he'd have passed the bills like flying colors, man. But everybody just don't know how to vote. That's all. That's the thing about they don't know what the voting um, status is all about. That, okay. Thank you for taking this call, sir. Well, thank you. You continue to have a great day, man. And uh, and no matter what y'all feel about it, again, maybe I didn't get the memo. Maybe I don't know what's going on. But I still feel that you should vote, hold people accountable. The caller called in even about my wife. You know, that's that's what we're talking about. You you got to hold, hold everybody accountable, you know. So so the thing is, still do it, still call in, still vote, still go to the college fair, do something because we live in a society where all these things can occur. Can you imagine living somewhere when it doesn't, you can't vote? You can't go to a college fair. You somebody tells you what your career is going to be, and you got to do that or whatever. Come on, y'all. Uh, we got some other callers calling in. Uh, you're on the air with Tyrone Winfrey. Hello, Detroit. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Listen, I just have to say this. I am sick and tired of black folks calling in or not calling in or whatever, talking about how they're not going to vote. Mm -hmm. I have never heard any other race of people Ooh. sit back and talk about how they're not going to vote. Now, we're the the most ill-informed in terms of that kind of thing, and the ones, the last ones to get on the boat to vote, okay? We're it. And we're the ones sitting around talking about how we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's just absolutely ridiculous. And I know they heard it, how people died and all this kind of stuff to do it, but it's not that they died. They got killed mm. trying to vote with your black behind to sit up here and talk about how you don't want to vote and how corrupt everything is. Well, doggone it. Get in the system that you are paying to be in and change it if you don't like it. If you don't like the way somebody is running in the office, vote and get them out of there. And keep voting until you get the right one that you like in there. You don't sit around and not participate. And these people are taking your money. If any of you who are calling in talking about not voting have I ever worked anywhere, and I'm sure most of you have, even if you don't work, they're going to take that money from you. They're going to take your taxes. Okay, it is called tax action without representation. You're going to sit up and pay to be in a society and live in this country and don't have no say-so and let uh, everybody else vote for you. Because if you don't vote, you get what I want because I vote. I, I, I got you. I, I appreciate you. You see what I'm saying? Call. So it's just absolutely asinine to I, me I, I, to I, sit I, up I, in here talking about I ain't voting because I don't like the system. And you live in this system. And a lot of you calling in here saying that you're benefiting from the system sitting up drawing Social Security and using bridge cards and doing this, all this other kind of stuff, but yet you don't want to participate in it, but you want to participate Woo! in calling in and complaining every week. I've had it. I Black folks get up off that junk and get on out here and get in this system. Follow me to Africa where a lot of you want to go. Hello, Detroit. And these Detroit. countries and Black get folks vote. get killed trying to vote over there. Woo! Not even dealing with you over there. They have big massacres 
and everything over those countries. Go try somewhere else to live and see where you come up. I'm a, I'm a guy. You, you, you own it. You own it. Okay, Carla. Thank we, you. We, we got a couple more minutes. We'll take a couple more. Okay. It's hot. Vote. Make sure you vote. They talked about, you know what, you look at South Africa, look at other nations, look at what's, uh, come on, y'all. Come on. Callers are calling in. Uh, you're on the air with Tyrone Winfrey. Hello, Detroit. Good morning. Good morning. Who do we have this yeah, morning? Previous caller uh, uh, was uh, disparaging black people for not voting, um, but in all so-called races and ethnic groups, uh, none of us vote at our maximum level. White okay. people don't vote at their maximum level. Mexicans, nobody else. So uh, the voting um, situation, uh-huh. uh, you know, people don't trust it. Yeah. Overall, the whole country doesn't trust it. Right, right. And as far as black people is concerned, a lot of us haven't bought into uh, the system because of what has been going on in our communities for decades. I mean, there's a, a, a rhyme uh, to the reason or the reason to the rhyme. <laughs> it's, it's people, people have reasons why they don't participate. Okay. That being said, I still think you should vote. Take, uh, uh, give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but I'm telling you, these systems in place, just like they took over the choice democracy, mm-hmm. um, okay. went we, we, with we, all these we, emergency we, managers and all that, despite what the people voted on. I mean, how can you expect people to really uh, respect uh, the system. Okay. Well, caller, your your point is well taken. We, we're about to go to a break. Thank and, and I got some other callers. I want you all either to hold on to after the break or call in after the break. But uh, just just uh, we, we want your opinions as well. We thank everybody that has called in thus far. And the numbers, again, are 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, or 868 868- Four three three six. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back to those other callers. Thank you for hello, Detroit. I will say a little prayer for you, and I will always care for you. Hello, hello, Detroit. 